So which of these incidents received the most complaints? It was Jerry Springer, the opera. Uh, that's right. Uh, four years ago, BBC Two's Jerry Springer, the opera, uh, notched up uh, 55,000 complaints, uh, mainly from Christians who are upset by uh, Stuart Lee and Richard Thomas's script, which contained oodles of swearing, the suggestion Jesus was gay, and Eve sticking her mitts under his loincloth. Uh, you're watching The Right Stuff with David Bull and Diamond and Paul McKenna. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, uh, I should mention Paul's new book, I Can Make You Sleep, is out now. Uh, still to come this uh, fairly grey morning, why are we so fat? Why do three times as many of us have a weight problem today uh, compared with 30 years ago? 0207 173 that's the number to dial. But first, are you ready for Ross's return? Britain's highest paid TV star. Actually, I don't know, with Paul McKenna here, I don't know if we can say that. No. Uh, Britain's highest paid TV star returns to his Friday night chat show this evening after a three month suspension. A Wassie, who's on six million pounds of licence payers' cash a year, uh, was told to stay at home following public outrage over a Radio 2 stunt he pulled with the comic Russell Brand. The pair, as I'm sure you know, left obscene messages on the answer phone of 78 year old Fawlty Tales legend Andrew Sachs. The pair both apologised eventually, although I'm not altogether convinced by the sincerity of Russell's words. He's been getting a lot of gags out of the Saxgate scandal in his stand-up routine. Was, on the other hand, uh, seems more forthcoming. He's going to be seen apologising again in his TV show tonight, which was recorded yesterday. But, folks, if you've got a beef with bad language, I don't think you're going to be very happy. The show is still littered with the F-word. From my own point of view, I just can't believe still all the fuss that followed Saxgate. I mean, only two people complained when the Radio 2 show was first broadcast back in October. It contained warnings of the content. Uh, but by the time the Daily Mail had finished ramping the story up, the number had risen to 42,000. The paper is obsessed with how much Wassie earns. Maybe Daily Mail editor Paul Dacre is jealous because he has to struggle to get by on a measly £1.6 million a year, which, of course, is less than a third of Wassie's pay packet. Gee, Mr Dacre, must be tough. Uh, so, will all those who complained about Saxgate now boycott Wassie's show? Will you, David? I mean, what, what were your views in the first place? Were you, uh, were you offended by it? Um, I think this is... I, I don't like it, and I also think at a time... Don't like what? Well, I have to say, at the time the BBC is really struggling in terms of its licence fee and how we're going to fund it and going forward, I don't think this is very helpful at all. I think people... Clearly, there are a lot of people out there who are angered by the amount that he gets paid. This is a prime-time show. I personally can't watch it. I don't like it, and I don't like it because I think it's puerile and I think the use of language is appalling. And I, I personally, if I was controller of BBC One, wouldn't have it on. Do you have any problem with him returning? I mean, I'm not, cause let's be honest, if you look at the ratings figures, right, the vast majority of people in this country, like 56 million people, don't watch Jonathan Ross's show. Yeah. So, whether that, you know, that, I don't even know whether we have to take those views but into account, do we? I, it's it's I the four million that, 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 that regularly watch that is the issue. Will they, will they boycott it? Will they go back? No, the, the perversity of this, of course, they will go back and he will get more notor notorious for it and actually will, it will aid his career. But well, I you think... say that, I mean, his book, uh, I mean, it died, died on its backside over Christmas. I mean, literally... Just died. But isn't that because publishers didn't, you know, and the bookshops didn't support it in, in the mm. way that they have to support a commercial product? I don't know. I mean, I, I feel the same thing. And I, I would, I, I, I'd hate to pillory Jonathan Ross too much because he's a nice bloke. He's yeah. all right. I mean, he's not. He's he's a nice human being. He didn't mean to hurt. He didn't mean to offend. What I do think is is pretty good is that somewhere along the line, somebody said, "Hang on a minute. Let's do something about standards." And this will, this will mean that at least for a few months, that same sort of. Puerile, infantile, disgustingness. I know. Puerile, again. infantile. You know, not everybody I mean, sends a humour appeals to everybody. And yeah, we're not talking. We're not talking about sex gate. Sex gate was a radio am. two show. No. Yeah. I'm talking about Jonathan Ross made a mistake. He apologised mm. for it. He's done his time. Three months. Yeah. Are we going to get get over, get over it, it, it and allow him That's to carry on? Yeah, or are we going to sit there saying, "Oh, it's a disgrace. It he shouldn't be allowed on TV"? You know, I've worked for the BBC for a long time, and there are editorial standards. And it seems that when it comes to that show, everything that we always abided by goes out the window. And I don't really understand quite why. There's one rule for lots of programmes and one rule for that one. But the real issue, again, without wishing to be very boring about it, is he made a mistake, right? He's acknowledged that. He's apologised for it, in my view, profusely. Mm. He served a three-month suspension. He's lost nearly £2 million, £1.6 million he's lost, which, you know, is not insignificant, although I'm sure he can afford it. He's done his time. <coughs> the, the ban is over. He's back on TV tonight. Mm. Do we, is there any reason for anyone to say, right, that he has no right to return to his TV show? He might not like his TV show, except 56 million people don't. But is anyone going to say he has no right to return to that show? 
No, he's no. got every right to. I mean, get on, right. get on with the job, right. I'd say. Paul, I um, yeah, see, I know Russell, and uh, and actually, I like Russell, and he's not yeah. a mean-spirited person. And and yes, but they both made a mistake. Mm. There's no doubt about that. I don't know uh, Jonathan as well, um, but he's never been anything other than very nice to me. But but then I don't have an answer phone, so. <laughs> <laughs> He's done his time. Happy to see him back? Yes. Yeah. OK, good. Let's throw it open to you. Uh, will you be watching What's His Return tonight? Amy? First caller will be. It's Debbie on line one. Morning, Debbie. Good morning. Good morning. Did you used to watch his show before? All the time. OK. Will you be watching it tonight? Absolutely. OK. Glad he's back? <laughs> he should never have gone for as long as he should have. Because um, I resent having paid my TV licence fee and not being able to have him on. And as for being... Infantile and that. Well, I guess that makes me infantile <laughs> as well. Yeah, I, I, I have to say, I, I, it's unfair to to judge his show and then say whether or not you should be allowed to do it. There's plenty of stuff on TV that I don't like. I'm sure everybody here well, exactly. has, has shows and they don't like. Did they um, actually, you know, the, all these people that rang in and complained, do they actually watch him? Well, I doubt it. There's a question, Debbie. I, Thank you for the call. I, I think there's a the bigger issue here, which is that this is really just a catalyst to something much bigger, which is that I think there is resentment out there about the pay of certain high-paid performers. Yes. I also think that there is a lot of uh, Middle England and older England who feel the BBC is no longer programming to them, and I think that this has catalyzed that. Yeah, yeah. But as I said, there's, all of us would be able to say... We could easily name two, three, four, five, six, ten, twelve, twenty shows we don't like. We sure. Uh, EastEnders, a total waste people of money. Event, a horrible, people horrible, are venting. depressing, exactly. mind numbing, yes. life debasing <laughs> yes. experience in misery. It yeah. robs people, yes. of, their, yeah, yes. it robs yes. people yes. of their wives and their husbands yes. who are glued into this. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> could you mobilise 40,000 people to complain about oh, that? Oh, wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be great? Can we have something cheerful on at 7.30 on BBC yeah. One? Um, thank you for that, Debbie. Let's have another. OK, we've got an opposing view here from Julia on line two. Julia, good morning. Good morning. Did you used to watch his show before? I would watch his show if some, or someone I was interested in right. was on. OK. I don't often like some of the ways he handles the people, but I would watch it if somebody I liked was on. Right. I'd go... I'd, I, I, I would pretty much side myself with that, Julia. So will you be watching tonight? Um, yes, I will. I will watch for the first minute and then I will turn it off. And I think anybody <laughs> who feels that they objected to what he did and what he said should do the same because you're making a statement that the BBC will know we've all switched off and we just made the protest. OK. I don't understand why you want to switch on for the minute if you want to make the protest, because... I thought, but what I'm showing is that I would, like Tom Cruise is on, and I'd like to listen to him. So I would usually have watched it, yeah. but I should put it on and then deliberately switch off. Why? Because you believe that that will show up in the ratings? Yes. Is that, that what... it, yes. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> so it won't, that won't work. I think a far, far better idea, if you want to make your protest heard, is not to tune in at yeah. all, Julia, but uh, 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 watch five. There's a thought. Julia, thank you. What about our audience, Eric? Okay, well, next one is Richard. So, Richard, will you be, are you ready for what is return? I'll be ready for uh, Jonathan Frost's return. I feel that he's paid his dues. Yeah. And, in fact, even though he, he earns a huge salary, if he donates some of his money to charity to help people, other presenters to come along, I think that's a good thing to do. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking he's going to be sitting there interviewing Tom Cruise, right? Jonathan Ross earns £6 million, albeit of licence payers cashier. Tom Cruise is on £15 million a film. He can knock out three or four films a year. OK? And, and most of them, quite frankly, are rubbish, in my view. So, <laughs> and I feel... And I think cinema-goers are probably being fleeced every time they go and see one of them. But that, that's, that's my view. But, you know, it's all relative, isn't it? Jonathan Ross is, debatably, the best entertainer, mainstream entertainer or, or cutting-edge entertainer that we have. Yeah, so definitely. maybe he is worth the money, relative to Tom Cruise. Yeah, for definite. I think he's paid his dues, and I think it could be a, a bit of a publicity stunt as well, just to perhaps, you know, yeah. to make more profile for the programme. Maybe, maybe. And uh, I just feel he's paid his dues, and you know, I'll be glad to see him come back. OK. And we'll have one more call, please, Amy. OK, yeah, next caller then is Hakeem on line three. Hakeem, good morning. Hi there, good Hi morning. There. Uh, did you used to watch the show before? Yes, I did used to watch it. And I just have to say, um, this past couple of months, actually, that he hasn't been on, it just shows how much, you know, we, well, I miss him anyway. I think he's very, very funny. I think that's his style. 
And I think the actual situation with Andrew Sachs, I think that's blown way out of proportion. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 and, and, and the topic actually is like, um, it, it became about his money rather than the actual situation yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah. And, they're, 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 and can I just say the granddaughter as well? All of a sudden, she's a celebrity. She benefited out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, so it's just. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's uh, a, a different issue. I mean, she didn't ask, though, to have details of her sex life broadcast on radio, too. And, uh, mm. you know, it's... Uh, yeah, it, but, it, it, yeah uh, but, mm, but her profile has all of a sudden risen. And yeah, 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 but she, you know, she didn't cast the first stone, did she? She didn't start yeah. the ball rolling. Uh, I, I'm not going to blame her for, for cashing in on it, because, uh, quite frankly, I think both Russell and Jonathan long-term will benefit from the yeah, scandal anyway and, and all the attention. Um, I thank you very much for calling. One well, interesting thing about Hakeem is the show that replaced uh, Jonathan Ross. Uh, the Live at the Apollo was actually rating better. Yeah. So uh, it did seem to bring more pleasure to more people. Anyway, I may be tuning in, but it will be for Stephen Fry if I do. So not yes. for Mr. Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> After the ads.